Hi all, welcome to RoboPortal, I'm Danny and today I'm gonna build this, the nearly perfect motor to wheel assembly for this small robot. Let's discuss the design first. It's a common practice to directly attach the wheel to the gearbox output shaft, but this method is far from being robust enough. Let's dive into the issue. Small gearboxes are equipped with bushing instead of bearings. Bushings can handle radial forces over time. Constant radial force causes them to veer, leading to increasing the gap between gears and ultimately causing loss of traction. To address this problem, we can support the wheel on ball bearings. However, this creates a new challenge, connecting the wheel and gearbox shafts. The solution is to use flexible coupler. There are two typical approaches, aluminum flexible coupler or a set of pulleys with a rubber belt. Both are effective, but using either one significantly increases the size of the entire motor wheel assembly. We can develop a simple solution to this problem by having an inner shaft with a key for the gearbox output and hollow outer shaft for mounting the wheel. The space between the shafts can be filled with the soft silicone to act as a damper. It will also help to mitigate the possibility of shaft misalignment. All right. Let's move from theory to practice and build a thing. I have already printed all the necessary parts. You can find the links to the 3D models in the video description. I'll start by assembling the mold for the tire casting. First, I'll insert the rim into the form. Next, I'll add clamping plate over the rim. It's important to apply pressure to the outer edge to prevent the silicone from entering. After all parts in place, I'll secure them with a nut and bolt. Let's set the mold aside and prepare the silicone for casting. The brand I'm using comes in two components. I'll mix those using a reusable cup. I'm cutting the rim of the cup. It will make it easier to put the silicone later. The compound needs to be mixed in one-to-one -one ratio by weight so it's necessary to use scales with 0.1 gram resolution to ensure accuracy. It's critical to thoroughly mix the components when casting small parts, as an incomplete mix could prevent them from fully curing. Take your time mixing, and when you feel it's ready to be poured, mix it one more time. I've read recommendations to use two cups for mixing, but I've never followed them. For me, using a single cup works just fine. The silicone is ready. I'll start with the shafts first. I got away from making the mold for them. Instead, I left the pieces on the print bed to ensure the inner and outer parts are correctly positioned and the bottom edges are sealed well. The gap between shafts is narrow, so I can't pour the silicone directly from the cup. I'm using a sharp bamboo stick and pouring it drop by drop. It's slow, but it works. There will be some trapped air bubbles, so I'll give them time to escape. Luckily, the viscosity of the silicone is high enough. Now, I'm moving on to the wheel. I'll pour it from side to side, giving Mole a few taps on the table to distribute it evenly. I'll also make sure to pour the compound above the desired level to compensate for the volume of air bubbles that will escape. I was working on the wheel and during that time the air bubbles escaped from the silicone in the shaft, so now I'll add more to fill it up. I'm done with the casting. I'll set molds aside and wait until tomorrow for the silicone to fully cure. Alright everyone, while we are waiting let's talk about the motor I'm gonna use for this project. I'm sure you all know this little guy. The one I'll be using is slightly bigger and longer. This means the DC motor has larger momentum. And the best part is that the gearbox is enclosed, which helps to protect the inner parts from dust and dirt. Despite the motor being beefier, the shaft dimensions are still the same. Oh, and there is a magnetic encoder, but we will talk about that next time. Let's move on to the next step. I'm checking the leftovers in the cup to make sure that silicone is fully cured and it's safe to remove the parts from the molds. Everything looks good. Let's start by cleaning up the shafts first. There may be some excess silicone that is a bit greasy, but the paper towel should do the trick. Now, let's move on to the wheel. It's a bit more challenging to work with. I'm starting by removing the clamp by unscrewing the bolt. Next step is to separate the clamping plate. 
but it looks like some silicon has gotten in between the parts and is making it a bit harder to separate them. With a few tries, using Volson metal rod, I finally managed to remove the clamping plate. Good thing I remembered to add holes for this. Now that the plate has been removed, it's time to take the rim out of the form. Using mini pliers can be very helpful for this task. It's important to work carefully, pulling from the different sides to get the best results. Ok folks, I have run into a little problem. Some of the T-shaped pins that were holding the tire in place have come out, so I need to carefully massage it to get back in its original place. Alrighty, it's time to tidy up. I poured a little extra silicone to account for shrinkage and now it's time for trim it down. The material is quite soft, so I couldn't find the best way to cut it. It's worth sharing your experience in the comments. So far, I found that using sharp side cutters, specifically designed for cutting plastic spruce, works ok. Once both shaft and wheel are ready, I'll check their fit by putting them together to make sure that everything is accurate and free of any silicone excesses. The dry fit is looking great. Before we move on, I wanna share with you my first attempt at making the wheel. I didn't consider the softness of the silicone and how it needed to be secured. As you can see, my initial design was a complete failure. And now, it's finally time to assemble all the parts. I'll begin by mounting the motor using two M2 screws, making sure to keep socket in the correct position. Once the motor is mounted, I'll rotate the encoder's wheel to make sure that the gearbox isn't blocked by any screws. Then, I'll assemble the wheel and shafts by putting the shaft on the table and placing the wheel over it, ensuring that there is no misalignment between the inner and outer parts. Next up are the two spacers. Once the wheel is ready, I'll install the bearings. They are filled just a bit tight, so I'll need some help from the flat surfaces to make sure that they are installed flush. To hold everything together, I'm using 4 M3 bolts and nuts. Unfortunately, the ones I have are slightly longer than required. But no worries, I'll replace them later. Maybe. You know, nothing is more permanent than temporary. And now, for the final step, pushing in 4 M3 nuts to mount this assembly onto the robot chassis. I'm using a small wrench to ensure that everything is secured in place. And there we have it. The final result looks great. It's robust, compact and lightweight, which is exactly what we were aiming for. I hope this video was of interest to you. Please consider leaving feedback and ideas in the comment section below. Until next time.